Mabute will arrive here at the Katiba Mulilu Sport Complex. So just take us from where the president will arrive and disembark the ceremonial vehicle. Okay. As I said earlier that uh, once His Excellency debars from the Waza, then he proceed to mount on the tires, whereby the parade commander uh, will command the parade national salute. Uh, during this time, national and AU anthems will be played concurrently with a 21-gun salute. Thereafter, A. Commodore Abed Hihepa, the parade commander, will march forward and report to His Excellency and also at the same time invite His Excellency for inspection of the troops on the parade. Before we uh, move further, Colonel, talk to us about the 21-gun salute. What is the significance of that for those not familiar with the concept, for those not fam familiar with the significance of the figure? Um, at national events such as independence celebration, which is always addressed by His Excellency, it qualifies His Excellency, his entitlements, to be honored with a 21 gun salute. If, for this instance, uh, if this independent celebration was for any reason to be addressed by the Vice President or the Prime Minister, whereby the parade is constituted, then we look at the entitlement of the Vice President or of the Prime Minister, which in this case is 19 gun salute, uh, while for the ministers it's honored with 17 gun salute. Uh, this is uh, stipulated in our uh, ceremonial uh, manual, all arms ceremonial manual. It is stipulated the number of gun salutes that each person qualifies for. That's Depending why, on seniority. Exactly. Yes. Uh, that's why uh, His Excellency is always honored with 21 gun salute. Colonel, help us understand the context within which the Namibian Defence Force remains the custodian of national events of this scope and of this magnitude. What is the significance behind the NDF driving events of this nature? We understand that that is also provided for in the manual, the manner in which you conduct yourselves as the NDF at such occasions. So just help us understand why and how the NDF remains the custodian of such national events, please. Uh, the Namibian Defence Force is a product of history. Since, 20, since 21st March 1990, when Namibia gained her independence, there was a need to hoist the national flag for the first time, and a guard, of, and a guard battalion was established in 1990, and part of the guard battalion was a guard of honour. It is also a tradition in every country that has a defence force. Uh, the NDF has been participating in all our independence celebration and we all know that uh, the NDF is a true st testimony of a national reconciliation, it's a true reflection of forgiveness and acceptance. Therefore, the Guard Battalion that hosted the national flag for the first time at independence in 1990 in Windhoek, comprised of uh, former People's Liberation Army of Namibia and some members of uh, South African apartheid forces who were brought together to become the nucleus of what we know today as the Namibian Defence Force. And I should also point out that uh, during that time it was not easy at all to bring together these two former adversaries who fought against each other and here you bring them to stand next to each other or next to shoulder to shoulder. Thank you so much for that overview, Colonel. Apart from that, the Namibian Defence Force, of course, also is made provision for in the supreme law of the land, namely the Namibian Constitution. So what follows the gun salute, Colonel, in terms of the chronology of the program for a national day of this nature? Um, just after the gun salute, um, the parade commander has stated that he, he will f move forward to report to His Excellency, the President and the Commander-in-Chief, that... Uh, the troops are ready and at the same time he is going to invite uh, His Excellency to inspect the parade uh, whereby uh, the composition of those who are going to accompany the president for the uh, inspection of the parade for the inspection of the parade yes uh, it will be the chief of the defense force uh, the parade commander himself uh, there will be also two escorts in this case, uh, we have two female junior officers from Air Force who will lead uh, the, the, in front, they will lead uh, the, the, the delegation to inspect uh, the parade. Now, um, in this case, uh, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, the President of the Republic of Namibia, 
and commanding chief of uh, Namibia, uh, commanding chief of the Namibian Defence Force. Uh, he will then uh, inspect. First of all, he has to to pay uh, uh, respect to the national colour before he can proceed with the uh, inspection of the parade. Notwithstanding the fact that Namibia is in a celebratory mood because the country is turning 34 years old today, Colonel, it's also a very solemn occasion with respect to practices, with respect to customs, and those contained specifically in the manual of the Namibian Defence Force being the custodian of the event today and of course led by the commander in chief of the Namibian Defence Force being the fourth president of the Republic of Namibia, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. So upon completion of the inspection, perhaps before we get there, what is the significance of the commander in chief inspecting? Um, the commander in chief uh, is inspecting his troops to see how ready are they prepared for any operation perhaps that he might uh, instruct them or command them to undertake. Uh, therefore, it is very, very important for them to be inspected and to make sure that uh, they are ready for any operation that they might be instructed or commanded by the commanding chief in future. Very well. Thank you for that overview, Colonel. Of course, it needs to be borne in mind that there's a structure involved. There's a method behind what it is that we're witnessing, and it's a seasoned operation, carefully orchestrated, as you put it, for any eventuality to make sure that we are ready for this particular purpose. The focus is on demonstrating readiness. Walk us through the order behind the structure that we are witnessing and that the viewer is witnessing from home on their screens. Okay, um, the NDF have just mounted today a ceremonial brigade which consists of the Army, the Air Force and the Navy. The parade is comprised of the following elements. The NDF band and after the NDF band it is the parade commander. We have the parade commander, in this case, A. Commodore Abed Nande Hiepa, the deputy Air Force commander, and a qualified pilot. Uh, next to him is the second in command of the parade, Captain Navy Paulinus Nioma, Commander Naval Base, Captain Navy P.N. Zakaria. Then behind uh, or next to him there, we have, uh, uh, we have now the color party. The color party, it consists of the color party commander, a color host or a carrier, and two color escorts. And after that, there is a company of uh, guard of honor or presidential guard. We have army color. We have two army battalions, mm -hmm. that's the army color. We have two army battalions. Then we have Air Force color. We have two Air Force squadrons. Then we have a Navy color. We have a company from the Namibian Navy. Yes, Colonel. Um, we also have a, a parade sergeant major. That's the Navy color. That was uh, the Air Force color. And that is what the viewers can see on their screens at the moment. Yes, that's the, uh, the the Air Force color. And then after the Air Force color, it is two squadron Air Force uh, two Air Force squadrons. And then we have the Navy color. That's the Navy color with a company from Namibian Navy. Thank you so much, Colonel, for that overview. We can see that they are ready for the imminent arrival of the head of state, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. Once the president has inspected his troops, what then follows ordinarily, Colonel? Once the president uh, has inspected uh, the parade, we also expect at the edge of the parade, uh, the parade commander to request 
permission from the commander in chief to rejoin the parade and at the same time to march pass and march off the parade. Once the parade has marched off, what does the responsibility entail during the official proceedings or do, don't they have a particular responsibility during that time? Once uh, the parade has marched off, we then expect uh, the fly pass and free falls. Those are also significant features on a national program of those nature. Please tell us more about the significance of those two features, Colonel. Um, during the fly pass, uh, the fly pass is part of the parade whereby we are expecting uh, three K 8 jet fighters and two helicopters are going to salute the commander in chief. Sorry for the interruption, Colonel. For those viewers who may not be familiar with the aircraft that you've made reference to, what are they? Uh, K 8 is the name of the aircraft, those are jet fighters. And then we have also two helicopters, uh, Alueta helicopters that are also going to be part and parcel of the flight. Car. Yes, just one moment, Colonel. We are witnessing the arrival of Dr. Sara Kuangawa Amadila, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Namibia. Yes, Colonel, you may continue in terms of the aircraft and the functions that they will be performing and their significance, of course. Uh, the K 8 will be flying in an arrowhead or a VIC formation under the leadership of uh, Wing Commander Samora Liswaniso. He is uh, from uh, Zambezi region. Uh, all aircraft will display colors, and those colors will be yellow, blue, and green. We expect that the leading K-8 will be flown by the Wing Commander Samora Liswaniso and Flight Officer Bartromeus Havera. The K-8 on the right will be flown by uh, Wing Commander Shilongo Eliphas and Flight Officer Madana Maleski, while the other aircraft on the left will be flown by Wing Commander Franz Tobias and Colonel, Flight Officer Petrus Ewumbo. Indeed, we can see they are getting ready as we speak. Yeah, uh, these are the free fallers. Uh, that is Major First Kanjala Mutota. He will be carrying the national flag. We'll ha we have uh, Corporal Johannes Tautiko David. He will be flying with, or he will carry the Army flag. Staff Sergeant Vilho Shipopseni Angome will carry the AU flag. Corporal Muyenga Mateus Cantana with Air Force flag. While Staff Sergeant Setson Dekupanda Akumanga, he will carry the Navy flag. Where are they taking off from before their time? Arrives. They are going to take off from uh, Katima Murido Airport, just a few kilos outside Katima Murido town, on your way to Divundu or Kongola. Do we have an indication about the exact distance or the approximate distance between the Katima Murido Sport Complex and the airport from where they'll take off and how long it will take for them to be in the vicinity of the sport complex before we witness what is not only a significant event but also a spectacular moment. Uh, the distance is about uh, 15 uh, kilometers from uh, Katima Mulilo sport complex. Uh, it will be a matter of uh, five minutes they are in the air and then in, in, in a minute of in a minute then they are they are dispatched or they are they are uh, been airdropped already and then you'll see them as they are in the air and then in few few minutes you'll see them landing already on the parade very well i do not want to get ahead of ourselves colonel what is it that the viewers are witnessing at the moment of course they will be there for a while before they actually take off yeah that's the K-8 aircraft I was telling Which you. Which you were referring to earlier. Exactly. And uh, the wing commander, um, Liswaniso, is getting ready uh, to take off. And they are just signing all the necessary documents before they, sign, before they take off. What exactly do they need to comply with prior to take off, demonstrated by the signing off of those documents, uh, Colonel? Th there was inspection conducted by the technicians. And that is the technician uh, assuring the pilots that uh, the aircraft is ready to 
take off and all the components has been inspected of the aircraft. Uh, that's why they are assuring the pilot that you are in safe hands, you can, the equipment is ready, the asset is ready, you can take off and the mission should be uh, accomplished as per expectation. In other words, safety remains paramount, safety above anything else. Exactly, and you don't want uh, to compromise the mission and that's why uh, the technicians on the ground must make sure that the aircraft is well prepared, well inspected, it's refoiled and everything is in order. Colonel, having listened to you sharing with us how meticulously this was crafted in terms of the operation, how serious you are as an Ababian Defence Force about the safety, therefore all technical specialists have all hands on deck to ensure that every single box gets ticked before the mission gets underway. It certainly takes meticulous planning before this day arrives. Could you walk us through in broad strokes perhaps what the level of planning, the intensity it requires to get to a day such as today? Uh, it is not easy to bring all this equipment and assets and manpower on the ground. It requires a lot of resources that the Defence Force has, has to put together in order to come here in Zambezi region. For example, uh, the aircraft, you have to fly to Katima. You have to prepare the Jet A1 foil. You have to prepare the technicians and uh, the pilots. Accommodation need to be secured, although we have a military base also here. Uh, so all this, it really uh, 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 requires the Ministry of Defense and Veterans Affairs to make sure that uh, their troops are well prepared. And I should also uh, inform you that uh, really the leadership of the Namibian Defense Force and the Minister of Defense and Veterans Affairs has put together resources to make sure that uh, our troops are here to perform the national duties as assigned by the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia. How long does it take to prepare for an event of this magnitude, of this scope? Um, it takes time. It takes uh, about three to four weeks because we have to set up also a preparatory committee within the Ministry of Defense and Veterans Affairs where you bring all the components that are going to be involved in such an event, such as you need members from the ministry itself, you will need members coming from the Army, you need members coming from the Air Force, you need also members from the Namibian uh, Navy and Special Forces. All these members must form part and parcel of the ministerial committee that report to the executive director and the chief of the defense force who are at the same time also report back to the minister to assure the minister that our defense force are ready to go and perform the national duty as assigned to them at any time. Thank you for sharing that with us, Colonel. Now we will see the arrival shortly of the vice president of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Natumbu Nandi Ndaitwa, as well as retired Lieutenant General Ndaitwa. Before the head of state, His Excellency Dr. Nangulo Mbumba is expected to arrive at 10 o'clock this morning. Colonel, there's no doubt about the fact that everything seems to be in order, all systems go as we are preparing for the imminent arrival of the head of state. The Katima Mulilo Sport Complex um, is bursting at the seams with Namibians who have come here to witness this milestone birthday of the country. The country is turning 34 years old today. Last night, during an engagement on the primetime news bulletin, we spoke to Executive Director in the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology, and he said that we are expecting approximately 11,000 people today. How big a role, Colonel, does capacity play in terms of the ability of the Namibian Defence Force to execute the operation that is expected to be executed today? I always tell people that uh, military parades are the only tools that the government can use to celebrate or commemorate a national event such as Independence Celebration or Heroes Day commemoration. The number that you see here, it's a big number. More than One can even say it's more than 11,000. And people come here to celebrate uh, Independence Day. But what is attracting them, they want to see the forces. They want to see how their sons and daughters are dressed. They want to see that drill skills, their military drill skills. They want to see the aircraft, how 
they are flying. And I should mention also that yesterday alone, one private school in Katima Moliro uh, requested the Namibian Air Force pilots to go and talk to the liners so that they were just inspired by the aircraft, by seeing the aircraft, they wanted now to be motivated. And that's why uh, this private school have organized an event whereby the pilots, technicians, and other uh, supporting staff from Air Force to go and talk to these learners and to motivate them what type of subjects they should uh, take up and the career opportunities that are available within the Air Force. But Is that a, a request that the Namibian Defense Force entertains ordinarily? We do. We do entertain it. Um, even now, next month, we are going to send a team to Kunene region, where one of the schools have also requested the Namibian Defence Force to send a team just to go and educate these kids uh, of uh, career opportunities that are available within the Defence Force. Very well, Colonel. I think we're witnessing at the moment the arrival of the Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, Her Excellency Dr. Netungo Nandin Daitwa, as well as retired Lieutenant General Ndaitwa before the imminent arrival of the head of state, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. We can see that the troops are on high alert because the moment of truth is upon us. What is expected to happen within the next couple of minutes from your expectations, Colonel? As I mentioned earlier, we expect uh, His Excellency to also arrive just after the Vice President so we expect his uh, motorcade to be at the gate at this very moment at this very moment maybe in few 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 minutes few minutes colonel on the 25th of february 2024 the Namibian defense force was also responsible for the euro's funeral of our late president dr hageji kengop and as we understand, the collaboration between Southern African countries relating to military operations is a long-standing one. For an event of this nature, namely today, do we also see those forces from other countries in Southern Africa assisting us, or is this an exclusively Namibian operation? This is exclusively a Namibian operation. We don't have any uh, neighboring uh, forces. Uh, this is a national event that we normally uh, carry out as usual. So there's no uh, neighboring uh, forces that are taking part in this parade at all. And in terms of capacity, we have no shortage to be able to execute this particular mandate, Colonel? Not at all. Uh, we are talking of 34 years of independence. And uh, for your information, the Namibian Defense Force was established just immediately after independence on the 2nd of June 1990. So they are experienced in this type of uh, uh, ceremonies. Disembarking our official vehicle, the Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, Her Excellency Dr. Netumbo Nandin Daitwa, accompanied by her spouse, retired Lieutenant General Ndaitwa. Colonel, this morning we also spoke to the Minister of Information and Communication and Technology, Honorable Emma Teofilas, who shared with us that today will be the first for President Nangolo Mbumba as Head of State of this Republic, and probably the last, seeing that 21 March 2025 will witness the inauguration of the country's fifth president at the time. So today is indeed a historic milestone event. It is a historical milestone event, especially for the president, uh, for the first time that uh, he is going to address the nation during uh, the independence celebration and also at the same time he is going now to to, to inspect uh, also uh, the parade. Of course, a commemoration of this nature, an event of this scope and magnitude is impossible without the presence of Dilimani. They have been at it since last night, ensuring that they are ready for this milestone and they are preparing as we speak for the arrival of Namibia's fourth president, Dr. Nangolum Bumba, as well as First Lady, Madame Siski Mbumba, it is shortly before 10 o'clock. The president is expected to arrive here at the Katima Mulilu Sport Complex on the hour at exactly 10 o'clock. All the forces, as you explained to us earlier, Colonel, they are ready and on high alert to welcome and receive the Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, the President of the Republic of Namibia, His Excellency, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. Since the announcement was made that uh, the Vice President has arrived, 
So the troops are already on alert and waiting just for the commander to give a word of command, uh, national salute, and then immediately the procession will kick off. You shared with us earlier as well that by all standards, the president is already on the premises, at least at the gate. Yeah, um, but this I can I can still see that uh, there's no movements there. But uh, in few minutes, uh, he should be making his way already to the stadium. As we proceed with the program, once it commenced and we get through all the items, we will then witness more performances, and those include also the military brass band. Colonel, please talk to us about the role that the brass band plays to lighten up but also deepen our experience of a national day such as the Independence Day of Namibia. The military band, as you know, it's always uh, available at any national event to perform their duty. Uh, even not only the, the military band, including the Guard of Honor. You know, uh, during the opening of uh, Parliament, they are always there as Guard of Honor. Yeah, that's the motorcade of uh, His Excellency. The signal has been given. Exactly. Yeah, we will witness in a few moments the arrival of Namibia's fourth president, Dr. Nangolum Bumba, President of the Republic of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defence Force alongside First Lady, Madame Siski Mbumba. Denver? Yes, Colonel. His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, the President of the Republic of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defence Force, has just arrived at the entrance of the stadium in the presidential motorgate. And now he will get into the waza, which is a ceremonial jeep. At this point... Just one moment, Colonel. So, so that happens at the gate as well? Yes, at the gate. At this moment, um, the First Lady, Madam Bumba, will proceed to the VIP tent with the presidential motor gate while uh, His Excellency will enter into the waza. There are three wazas there. If you can just uh, check on your visuals, there are three wazas. Yes, we can see them on the, the right-hand side of the screen. They are ready to enter the gate. Now, the three uh, wazas or the jeeps the leading one is for security. The second one is for the Commander-in-Chief, the President of Republic of Namibia, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. And the last one is for the Chief of the Defense Force, Air Marshal Martin Kambulu Pinias. Uh, the President, we expect now the President to start rolling behind uh, the parade until where the dice is placed and he debars then proceed to mount the dais. Is the president on the waza alone or by whom is he accompanied on that waza in the middle? Um, the president is not alone on the waza. He has uh, a, a, an aide uh, de camp, uh, ADC, a senior military officer. In this case, we have Colonel Dinda. So that's the president uh, motorgate with the first lady proceeding to the VIP tent where she will be received by the Vice President, of course, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and other members of Cabinet, as well as MPs. And we will see the President of the Republic of Namibia enter on the Waza shortly. Exactly. How long will the, the initial part take before the President disembarks? Uh, this will be a matter of five minutes. Five minutes? just from the entrance up to the dais, uh, because the rolling part, it's, it's going to, to, to last maybe for three minutes, because it's a short uh, distance. This stadium, it's not big as uh, Independence, Inde Independence Stadium or other uh, venues that we have seen in other regions. So it's, it's, it's a smaller stadium, but at least the numbers are here. Colonel, to execute with such military precision, of course, requires a number of rehearsals. A layperson on the periphery would assume. Uh, you are correct. Uh, our members has been on the ground since uh, Friday, 
but the troops started rehearsing on Sunday. The rehearsal started at one of the soccer field in the location called Choto, where they perfect their military drill skills. Here in Katima Mulilo. In Katima Mulilo. And then on the same day, on, 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 on Sunday, uh, we came here after lunch again to rehearse at the actual stadium because each field, each venue where you, where you go, it's not the same like where you were previously. Uh, that's why you really need some adjustments uh, to make sure that uh, your task is performed well. Very well. The President of the Republic of Namibia is entering the gates of the Katima Mulilu Sport Complex. There you see the President, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, waving to the Namibian people. Yeah, um, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the first waza is for security, and the second waza. It is the one carrying His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, the President of the Republic of Namibia, and the Commander Chief of the Namibian Defence Force. That movement, that movement, that is what we call rolling. It's a rolling it move. That movement is called the rolling. So, and the third was behind. It is the one uh, with the Chief of the Defence Force being the head of the Defence Force. Uh, he is in the third was. So accompanying His Excellency. So um, the rolling takes approximately it, how many minutes? It depends on the, on the size, size of the stadium. Of the stadium. Mm. In this case, we expect His Excellency to arrive at the tires in the next three to four minutes. Namibians waving their flags proudly. The country is turning 34 years old. There's First Lady Madame Siski Mbumba who is entering the VIP tent while the rolling is underway, Colonel. Exactly. You can see the velocity, the speed at which they are traveling has slightly been decreased, if I'm not mistaken. It's a, it's a very slow uh, speed. You don't need to rush. You don't, there's no need to rush here. It's, you take time. You take your own time. It also contributes to the solemnness of this moment. And we need not rush a solemn moment, Colonel. Exactly. Upon the arrival of His Excellency at the dais, uh, he will then uh, debus and proceed to mount on the dais, whereby the parade commander will command the parade national salute. By this time, national, a national and AU anthems will be played concurrently with a gun salute. The parade commander, Air Commodore Abed Yep, will then march forward report to the president the readiness of the parade and also at the same time invite his excellency the president to inspect the troops on the ground you can see that uh, members of the public are waving to his excellency so people are happy people are happy people are ecstatic the energy is electric the atmosphere is absolutely phenomenal here at the Katima Mulilu Sport Complex, where for the first time since the country attained its independence on the 21st of March 1990, the Zambezi region and its capital, Katima Mulilu, playing host to an independence commemoration. We do know that the capacity of the stadium is in the vicinity of 10 to 11,000 people. Citizens and visitors of this region have come out in numbers, Colonel to commemorate this day, to witness this historic milestone as the country turns 34 years old. Yes, uh, the stadium is full to capacity. Uh, you can imagine the numbers that you can see here. Some people are not even in a shade. Uh, the tents, it's big tents, and uh, the numbers are just uh, amazing. And especially for the people of Sambezi, for the people of Katima Mulilu, we do know the transport was provided and members of the public started arriving as early as 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock this morning to witness the suspicious occasion. So His Excellency is debarsing now from the Waza and immediately he will mount the tires. His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, the fourth president of the Republic of Namibia.
Yes, Colonel. So the president is expected to, to mount the dais immediately. He, he has already mounted the dais. There he is. Uh, by now, the parade commander will now command the parade national salute for the singing of uh, national and AU anthems, which will be uh, also uh, uh, with concurrently with uh, 21 gun salute. Thank you, Colonel. The parade commander, A. Komodo, uh, Abed Nande Yepa, will now march forward to report to the President the readiness of the parade and also to invite His Excellency the President of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, to inspect the parade on, to inspect the, the troops on the parade. Very solemn moment. Seems to me the mic, it's not... Uh, functioning at this moment. The Commander in Chief of the Namibian Republic, the Commander in Chief of the Namibian Defence Force, the fourth President of the Republic of Namibia being invited to inspect the parade. The President firstly will pay a compliment to the national colour before he continue with the inspection of the parade. The Chief of the Namibian Defence Force, being the head of the Defence Force, will accompany the Commander-in-Chief during the inspection, whereby the two female Flight Lieutenants, namely Flight Lieutenant Claudia Ashipala and Flight Lieutenant Albertina Kandonga, are detailed to escort the Commander-in-Chief. They're marching in front of the Commander-in-Chief of yes. the Namibian Defence Force. Yes, uh, the two are marching in f up front, uh, to direct the commander in chief the lines of inspection. So His Excellency is now to pay compliment to the national color before he can continue with inspection of the parade. Please tell us something briefly about the line of inspection, Colonel. The line of inspection is just to direct uh, the two escorts who are in front. They are leading uh, His Excellency where to walk so uh, as you can see they are they have tent already so the president will exactly follow them now um, military parade uh, such as this one demand a higher concentration 
discipline above all and all soldiers must be well organized and prepared. Therefore, you might have seen um, the troops at the stadium perfecting all their drill skills uh, since last week, I mean since last Sunday. Uh, the president is now inspecting or passing the two army battalions. How long is this expected to take, Colonel? Uh, this is a matter of uh, three to four minutes and then the inspection is done. But it is an important component of the program of such a national event. Exactly, it's a very important uh, component of the program. Uh, the president is now approaching the two squadrons from Air Force. That's the Air Force color and he has just uh, passed the Air Force color, now inspecting the two Air Force squadrons. His Excellency is now approaching the Navy color. So he's inspecting now the Navy. After the inspection, uh, the parade commander will ask permission for from the president just at the edge of the parade to rejoin the parade and also to march pass and march off the parade and that is expected to happen within the next couple of minutes yes uh, his excellency is now uh, returning back to the dais and then of course colonel will then witness the fly past followed by the free fall exactly so we are now expecting uh, His Excellency to take his initial position at the dais and also the parade commander to take his position for the parade march pass and march off. Will the Commander in Chief of the Namibian Defence Force and the President of the Republic of Namibia remain at the, at the dais for the duration of the fly pass and the free fall or will his position change during that time? Uh, his position will not change uh, until the free falls has landed. All of them have landed at the marked uh, position here at the parade ground. Only then will the president proceed to his seat in the VIP tent. Exactly. And then the program also uh, kick off. Very well, Colonel. We see members of the public are still arriving here at the Katima Mulilo Sport Complex to witness this milestone birthday of the country. Namibia is turning 34 years old today. For the first time since the country attained its independence in 1990, the suspicious occasion is being hosted by the Sambezi region. I should also mention that uh, by this time, uh, the aircraft are already uh, on their holding point just waiting for the parade to start marching and then you will see them flying from this direction uh, of uh, uh, it's it's from uh, west to east are you saying that they would have taken off already from the katima mulilo airport Colonel? they did they did already they did all of them i want to imagine that one can almost hear something in the air but it could also be a result of the electric energy being witnessed on account of this special day in the history of the land of the brave okay um on the right and left side of the dais are the markers these markers are given a distance of 10 paces between themselves towards the middle of the dais once they have lined up and took up their position in military terms, they have formed up a saluting base. What's the significance of forming a saluting base, Colonel? Uh, the saluting base means as the parade turns left, you'll see them, they'll be turning left before they can pass the dais. Uh, as the parade turns left wheel, entering into the area of saluting base, each battalion and company commander are commanded by the parade commander to at which marker to give a word of command and this word of command are different from each marker. Has the commander in chief of the Namibian Defence Force and the President of the Republic of Namibia given his authorization for the parade to march? He stands and pass. 10 meters yes, he got battle. that uh, authorization already. Now, the following actions at the markers, the following actions will take place at each marker. You can see the first marker outside. 
at the edge of entering into the saluting base will be as follow at the first two outside markers the parade have to dress and adjust the third marker is for warning the fourth marker is for ceremonial steps while the fifth marker is for ice right uh, ice right means troops should salute to the right and given as given the troops pass the dais to look to the right where his excellency or the guest of honor is standing What are we witnessing at the moment, Colonel? Uh, the parade have started uh, already to march pass and march off at the same time. So uh, the parade commander is leading. He's followed by the parade to IC. And then followed by the national color. Followed by the guard of honor. Followed by the army color. Followed by two army battalions. So the commander has already started giving word of command at each marker, as I have indicated earlier. And the duration, of course, is again dependent on the size of the stadium. So in this instance, it would not be as long as it would be at Independence Stadium in the Namibian capital. Exactly. Uh, this will take a little bit longer also because uh, some troops are marching, but not at the same pace like this one's in front. So that is now ice right. The commander has already given a word of command. Ice right. Ice right means troops should salute to their right and is given as the troops pass the dice to look to their right where His Excellency or the guest of honor is standing. As opposed to ice left. <laughs> There's only ice right or ice front and also ice left. Very well. Yeah. Left the parade is marching past and off. Soon we'll witness the fly past, followed by the free fall. All aircraft already taken off from the Katima Mulilu airport. Their arrival in the sky is equally imminent. Now, the markers on the right side of the dais, uh, the nearest marker to the dais, the word of command is given for ice front because they were ice right, now it's ice front. Uh, while the rest of the markers, the troops, have to dress and adjust after they've passed the dais. Yes, Colonel. Fly pass is part of the parade, uh, whereby we expect any time from now on uh, the three K-8 jet fighters and two helicopters are going to salute the commanding chief. Uh, the k 8 will be flying in an arrowhead or a VIG formation under the leadership of Wing Commander Samora Lisuaniso. Lisuaniso is a, a, a senior officer from Zambezi region. That, of course, is not without significance, Colonel. Depending on the region that plays host to the national event, that position is filled by a representative from that region. Not always. Uh, he can go and, and fly past at any region. But uh, I'm just mentioning that uh, Lisuaniso is one of the senior officers from this region. Coincidentally. Who's, who's exactly, who's uh, to happen to be also the... the, the, the the, the, the commander of, of, of today's uh, uh, fly pass. So the colleagues are already in air, as I told you, and they are about to disembark from the aircraft. So those are the free fallers. And the viewer, of course, has the privilege and the honor to witness this in real time, Colonel, what those members of the public, and the first one has already jumped, in fact. Yes, uh, that is Major Festus Kanjala Mutota with the national flag. Uh, he has already left all of them, almost 
All of them, they left. They're in the air. So I was saying the viewer has the privilege of witnessing this in real time, something those in attendance here at the complex is not privy to. Exactly. Again, both solemn but also spectacular, the nature of the occasion. The country is turning 34 years old today, a day of significance as the Sambezi region and its capital, Katima Mulilo, play host to this commemoration for the first time since 1990. No small feature, a day of big celebration for the first citizen of the region, that's Governor Lawrence Ampofu and the people of the great Sambezi Colonel. We expect any time from now on uh, for the fly pass to take place. Um, as I mentioned earlier that uh, the fly pass is part of the parade whereby the three K eights jet fighters and the two helicopters are going to salute the commander in chief. Uh, the K eights will be flying in an arrowhead or a VIC formation under the leadership of Wing Commander Samora Liswaniso. All aircraft will display colours which are yellow blue and green. The leading K-8 is flown by Wing Commander Samora Liswaniso and a co-pilot its flight officer Patromeus Havera. The K-8 on the right will be flown by Wing Commander Shilongo Eliphas and flight officer Madana Maleski will be the co-pilot. Colonel, a co-pilot serves a very important purpose. You are my co-pilot during this occasion, serving the critically important purpose to help the Namibian viewer understand the context of what it is that they're witnessing, the significance of the chronology of the events as they have been unfolding for the last couple of minutes. It feels on account of its intensity and on, on account of the solemn and serious nature of these events that it's been going on for a very long time, but it also speaks to the military precision at which Members of the Namibian Defence Force, together with the, the Joint Forces, are executing this operation. You are right. Um, uh, I can see the Chief of the Defence Force is already pointing to the direction where we are expecting uh, the K-8s to approach from. He is already alerting the Commander Chief. There they are. There they indeed are. There they, are. There they indeed so, are. So this time around, the two Alouette helicopters will be flying in a left echelon formation under the leadership of Wing Commander Elias Ambabi. The leading helicopter with a national flag is flown by Wing Commander Elias Ambabi. Right above the Katima Mulilu Sport Complex at the and, present moment, you can hear and the co how excited members of the public indeed are. And his co-pilot is Quinton Damasen. The other helicopter with an India flag is flown by left, Flight Lieutenant Ribbon Imbrasha. And the co-pilot is Flight Officer Sam Nekongo. Witnessed for the first time in his capacity as the fourth president of Namibia, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba. Also a historic moment, a historic day for our head of state, the commanding chief of the Namibian Defense Force. Exactly, Denver. So, uh, I can see also that uh, um, the signal on the field, it's already directing the free fallers. K8, just a matter of seconds, they have passed already. Talk to us about the color of the signal that we just saw, Colonel. That color, um, it's seen above by the free fallers. Uh, Major Festus Kanjala Mutota with a national flag is the one to land first, and he is approaching the stadium already. So the color was just to direct the free fallers that this is the position where you are required in this area within this area it is where we expect you to land and he is just doing that in few seconds he's already approaching the ground and certainly not his first free fall colonel these are seasoned free fallers exactly very experienced well trained and uh, uh, mutota it's it's really a, a free faller that you can count on he will never disappoint you uh, we are also expecting uh, Corporal Johannes Tautiko David, an army flag. We are expecting Corporal Johannes Tautiko 
David with an there, leg. there he is. There he is, Colonel. It is not easy. It is not easy to control the parachuter, depending on the wind. How strong is this wind? And this guy must navigate. And there he is. That is none other than Major Festus Kanjala Mutota with the national flag. What an exhilarating moment as demonstrated, as depicted by the cheers, by the excitement of members of the public here at the Katima Mulilu Sport Complex in the capital of the Zambezi region, Katima Mulilu. Members of the public braving the humidity, braving the heat, braving the scorching Namibian sun. sun. They want to be part of this, this historic milestone event. The country is turning 54 years old today. What's happening there, Colonel? Uh, uh, this is um, Staff Sergeant Vilhoshi uh, Popseni Angome with an AU flag. He just landed also. Then we are also expecting Corporal Johannes Dautiko David with Army flag. His landing is equally imminent. The viewer can see him on screen at the moment. And as you were saying, it's no walk in the park to navigate your way through turbulence. These guys takes time for them to be trained. It takes determination. It takes discipline. So it really requires somebody who really want to show the nation that he is determined to serve the nation. And this is what you see that uh, these members of the Defense Force are performing today. So uh, Corporal Jonas Tautiko, David, with an army flag, it's now landing. Let's hope he missed the target. He missed the target. He missed the target. I would imagine that he experienced more turbulence than the others. It's the wind. Eh? It's very, very tough just to control, you see. Is there anything to be concerned about, okay. Colonel? This one, almost there. He landed safely. Yes, anchored <laughs> by the AU flag. <laughs> yeah. When does one need to be concerned? When the target is missed? Uh, yes, but not that much because they are not far from the target. You don't need to be very much concerned. They are not far from the target. But uh, as I said, that uh, the wind play a role. The wind play a role. And in the event of any incident requiring medical assistance, we of course have such medical assistance available on the premises as well as further me medical assistance in close proximity, Colonel. You are right, but uh, they are also well protected. They are well protected, well dressed, and uh, uh, it will be minor, minor injuries. So uh, we are expecting now uh, Staff Sergeant Setson, Setson Dekupanda Akumanga landed in the target with a Navy flag. He landed safely, target has been reached. And smoothly. Absolutely smoothly, a smooth execution. So, uh, on the ground here, we have uh, Staff Sergeant Gabriel Kola Hufiku, is the dropping zone safety officer, and his assistant is uh, Corporal Abner Shekutamba. Are there any more, Colonel, or was that the last one? Setson was the last one to land. And are we going to witness a second fly past, or is this the grand total of this aspect of the program, Colonel? This will bring us to the end of uh, the military part of it, and uh, we are expecting now uh, the free fallers to march forward and salute the commander in chief his excellency dr nangolo mbumba the president of the republic of namibia and commander in chief of the namibian defense force colonel believe it or not this military execution conducted with such incredible military precision took in the vicinity of 31 to 32 minutes it demonstrates how well prepared they were it demonstrates how seriously they are committed to the task at hand and still some wind also on the ground here at the Katima Mulilu sport complex what's happening at the present moment Colonel? Um, 
the free fallers, as I said, that uh, they will be marching towards the tires and salute their commander in chief. That march looks slightly different, Sergeant. Yes, Colonel. Yeah, they were they were just uh, running, uh, and then they will, they will, they will, they will hold. After they hold, they will salute, and then they will turn back and return to their parachutes. See now, there they are. They are marching towards to go and salute the commander in chief. And we do expect the formal program of today to commence shortly. Exactly. The commander in chief of the Namibian Defence Force, the President of the Republic of Namibia already is in the VIP tent alongside First Lady Madame Siski Mbumba. We just saluted that the mission was accomplished successfully and His Excellency is coming forward just to greet them and shake hands with them. That's Major Mutota. Setson. Again, both solemn and spectacular, a historic day in the land of the brave. By this time, the director of ceremonies uh, will take over the program of the day. Uh, the military band will come back later to conclude with a play of uh, AU and national anthems. Uh, Denver? Of course, uh, the director of proceedings today, Mrs. Regina Ndopu Luvinda, Chief Regional Officer at the Zambezi Regional Council, and she will conduct welcoming remarks in fact, introductory remarks, followed by welcoming remarks by the first citizen of the region, Lawrence Ampofu, Governor of the Great Sambezi. So the official program for the 34th Independence Commemoration is expected to be underway shortly. Okay, it has been my pleasure uh, working with you, Denver, today. Uh, I was honored to once again to be a servant of the Namibian nation. Uh, let me finally wish the Namibians a happy 34 Independence celebration and I thank you. Dave. Colonel, you've done a sterling job as my co-pilot. Allow me to also thank you and to also wish you a very happy Independence Day. Tapandula Unene, Colonel. Thank you, Denver. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Transport, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Honorable Sophia Shaningwa, Secretary General of the Swapo Party, Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Honorable Lawrence Sapofu, Governor of Zambezi Region and other governors present, Honorable Matengu Simushi, Chairperson of Zambezi Regional Council and President of the Association of Regional Councils and other chairpersons present. Your Worship, Councillor Honorable John Intemwa, Mayor of Katima Mulilo and other mayors present. Dr. George Smata, Secretary to Cabinet, Executive Directors, distinguished service chiefs, and all men and women in uniform, veterans of the national liberation struggle, honorable regional and local authority councillors, 
Chief Emmanuel Gasep, Chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders in Namibia, and all traditional leaders present, Father Jeans George, from the Holy Family Catholic Mission, and other religious leaders present, senior government officials, captains of industries present, fellow countrymen, women and children present, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, you are all acknowledged. We'll proceed with our program. At this point in time, allow me to invite for prayer and scripture reading Father Jeans from the Holy Family Catholic Mission. Good morning, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, Honorable Angolo Mbumba. All protocol observed. Thank you for this great opportunity. I stand here to invoke the presence of God to this great and proud celebration of our nation. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today to celebrate the independence of Namibia, we come before you with hearts filled gratitude and reverence. We acknowledge your sovereignty over all nations, and we thank you for the freedom and liberty you have bestowed upon the people of Namibia. We pray for your continued guidance and blessings upon this great nation. May your wisdom guide our leaders. May your grace be upon all the citizens. And may your peace reign within the borders of our nation. Help us to always remember the sacrifices made by those who fought for our freedom and inspire us to uphold the values of justice, equality, and unity. Grant us the strength and courage to overcome any challenges that may arise and may we always strive to build a brighter future for generations to come. Let this celebration be a reminder of your faithfulness and love towards us. And may it unite us in a spirit of joy and thanksgiving. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, Let's prepare ourselves to listen to the word of God. A reading from the Holy, a reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor 
and to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The word of the Lord. Isaiah 61.1 is a powerful proclamation of God's mission to bring liberation and restoration to his people. It resonates deeply with the spirit of independent celebrations, reminding us that true freedom extends beyond the political or social liberation, and it encompasses the restoration of dignity, hope, and purpose for all individuals. As we commemorate Independence Day, we are called to reflect on the profound significance of freedom in its fullest sense. This passage reminds us that the ultimate liberation comes through the works of God's Spirit, who brings healing to the brokenhearted, release to the captives, and light to those in darkness. In the context of Namibia's independence, we recognize the struggles and sacrifices made by the countless individuals to secure freedom from oppression and injustice. However, true freedom also entails addressing the deeper wounds of the past, fostering reconciliation, and empowering every citizen to flourish in their God-given potential. As we celebrate Namibia's independence, may we be inspired by the vision of Isaiah 61.1 to strive for a future where freedom, justice, and compassion reign supreme, reflecting the transformative power of God, love in our midst. Let's be a people united for prosperity. May the merciful Lord bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for the prayer and scripture, Father Jesus. We proceed with our program. Today we are gathered here in Zambezi region, Katima Mulilo, to celebrate the Republic of Namibia's 34th year of independence. This year's independence celebration is held under the theme, A People United for Prosperity. The theme is indeed befitting as Namibia cherishes the diversity which exists in terms of culture and tribes and other resources which exist, which are differing in all regions. We view this diversity which is required and which should unite us and not allow us to be in conflict, to bring an opportunity for us as a country to actually progress and prosper. Katima Mulilo and Zambezi region is strategically located, having been one area where the liberation struggle and those who went out of the country and our neighboring countries such as Zambia and Botswana actually received us in unity and fought the war of liberation with us. Today, for Katima Mlilo and most of us, this is quite very significant. And for our liberation heroes who are seated here today, it indeed brings memories and indeed is a joyful occasion which they should treasure. For today, on the 34th Independence Celebration, it, it shows that you indeed fought a great fight for those who have fallen and those who are still alive who will be with us to give us the memories 
of what they did and how they contributed to the country's liberation. Therefore, as we celebrate today, we are asking the residents to be quiet joyful to celebrate in unity, to really appreciate this opportunity which the government of the Republic of Namibia has given to us as a region to host the 34th independence celebration. We will proceed with the program and at this point in time, we are inviting two cultural groups, the Itenge Spelu group, and the Kasoko Cultural Group to come forward and showcase the rich culture of the Zambezi region, Itenge Spelu Group, and the Kasoko Cultural Group. Please proceed. Can I ask the people in front here to please sit down? Those who have come inside the you are tuned in to a special broadcast on this 21st of March 2024 where the independence commemoration for the first time since 1990 is taking place in the capital of the Zambezi region, Katimo Mulilo, and we are witnessing a cultural performance at the moment. Tell us more about the historical significance of hosting the independence commemoration here in the Zambezi region. We're delighted to be joined by Dr. Edit Moa a historian attached to the University of Namibia's Katima Mulilu campus. Good morning, Doctor, and welcome to this special broadcast. Good morning to you and happy independence. Nitu Mezi, Doctor. Happy Independence Day to you too. Doctor, talk to us about the significance, particularly from a historical perspective, of Katima Mulilu and Sambezi region playing host to this commemoration. Well, um, thank you so much. Well, the independence um, has not yet been, I think you rightly pointed out, uh, this is perhaps the first independence celebration, official independence celebration in the region. Um, it's very significant in the sense that uh, the Zambezi region in particular played a very pivotal role in the liberation struggle movement um, as it was used as a launch pad uh, by the SWAPO to counter the South African uh, regime in Namibia. So it's very significant from a historical point of view uh, and uh, it was used uh, mainly as a it was used mainly as a springboard by both the South African and the Swapo freedom fighters. Um, number one, with the South African, they used the region to launch attacks on Swapo uh, who were in both Angola and also in Zambia and uh, equally the South Af the the Swapo freedom fighters they used the region as a launch pod uh, or a launch pad 
to attack um, uh, or to sabotage military installation within uh, the Zambezi region. And um, remember, the Zambezi region hosted South African military installation. So up until 1964, uh, the South, or rather the Zambezi region was um, actually under the South African police uh, protection. And from 1964 onwards, when the events or the political events um, intensified and the formation of KANU was established, uh, the South African uh, uh, Defence Force actually took over. So it became really a, a, a theatre of uh, the liberation struggle war movement from the 1964 up until 19, late 1960. Uh, late in the 1960s. Of course, Doctor, thank you for that overview. One needs to have due regard to the geographical location of the Zambezi region and how it was both strategic for the South African forces but certainly also for the liberation movement and on account of its proximity to so many other African countries it played a significant role but we'll continue our conversation around that Indeed. shortly doctor <laughs> about the geographical significance of Sambezi, both to South African forces, but certainly also to the liberation movement. Indeed. Help us understand why both would have wanted to capitalize on this strategic location. Well, uh, both wanted to capitalize on this strategic location, obviously, for the purpose of winning the war. Uh, remember, South Africa considered um, the Swapo Liberation Struggle Movement as a form of terrorist and they labeled the Liberation Struggle Movement um, and the planned fighters as terrorists which means um, since the death of um, uh, Tobias Hainieko who was the commander in chief of the Swapo Liberation Struggle Movement uh, on the Zambezi uh, when he was trying to cross into uh, Southwest Africa, into Zambezi region or into Caprivi to try to establish communication between uh, uh, Southwest Africa and their base in Zanzibar. Thank you, Doctor. I just want us to have regard to the cultural performances currently underway. Right. Zambezi region is also very rich in diversity and very rich in terms of cultural diversity in particular. Would you like to say something about that from a historical perspective? Well, um, the Zambezi region is very rich, like you pointed out indeed. It's a, actually a melting pot of cultures. Uh, we have um, approximately different, uh, approximately six different tribes in the region. Um, these are the Mafe, the Masovia, the Mayei, uh, and the Mashi. These are recognized traditional authorities, but within these different traditional authority we have sub-ethnic group such as the Matotela, uh, such as the Mbukushu, 
So it's a melting pot of culture. So um, generally, um, from an outsider perspective, the culture looks a little bit similar. However, there are some distinct differences in each of the sub-ethnic uh, group. Thank in you, terms doctor. of uh, food, dances, as as you can see. Thank um, you, doctor. Thank um, you very much. Like the performance that we have right now, and earlier on we had its fellow uh, group. Thank you, thank you.
I now invite to the podium to give us the welcoming remarks, Honorable Lawrence Sampofu, Governor of Zambezi Region. Thank you very much, our Director of Proceedings, Your Excellency, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, and First Lady, Madam Mbumba. Your Excellency, Dr. Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, and the Lieutenant General Denga Ndaitwa. Right Honorable Dr. Sara Kungero Madira, Prime Minister of the Republic of Namibia, and Mr. Madira. Your Excellency, Dr. Sam Nioma, Founding President and Father of the Namibian Nation, and Madam Kovambo Nioma, in absentia. Your Excellency, Dr. Ifike Punye Pohamba, Second President of the Republic of Namibia, and Madam Penahupifo Pohamba in absentia. Honorable Johnny Mtorwa, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Transport, and Madam Comrade Sophia Shaningwa, Secretary General of the Swapo Party. Honorable Professor Peter Kachavivi, Speaker of the National Assembly in absentia. Honorable Snimbo Muha, Chairperson of the National Council. Honorable Maki Andere Venani, Leader of the Opposition Party and other political party leaders present here. Your Lordship, Judge Peter Shivute and other judges. Honorable ministers, members of parliament, deputy ministers, Honorable James Werikwa, chairperson of the Governors Forum, and all other governors present, Air Marshal Martin Pinias, chief of the Defense Force, Lieutenant General Joseph Shkongo, Inspector General of the Namibian Police, Commissioner Amiela, Commissioner General Amiela of Namibia Correctional Services, esteemed Gaub Gasep, Chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders, Your Royal Highness, all present here. Dr. George Simata, Secretary to the Cabinet. Honorable Matengu Simushi, Chairperson of the Zambezi Regional Council. All Chairpersons of Regional Councils and the Regional Councillors. Your Worship, Honorable John Taimwa, Mayor of Gatima Mulilo. All Mayors and the Local Authority Councillors. Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Honorable Alex Namenda, District Commissioner of Sesheke, Zambia, and your delegation, our respected Ngambelas, traditional authority leaders, esteemed executive directors, chief regional officers, captains of industry, directors, deputy directors, and all senior government officials, chief executive officers, heads of department, religious communities, business fraternity, men and women in uniform, respected invited guests, the community at large, and members of the media. Good morning, Muzuire Chuang. Oh. 
Thank you. A special welcome and thanks to our guest of honor, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia and the Commander in Chief of the Namibian Defense Force and First Lady. On behalf of the regional leadership and the residents of Zambezi region, I present to you a warm welcome to Zambezi region, to all our dignitaries present here. The Zambezi region is one of the 14 regions of Namibia. It is located in the northeastern part of the country. The region is a gateway to some certain countries such as Angola, Botswana, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. It is largely concurrent with the major Zambezi River, after which it was named. The region has eight constituencies, and its capital is right here in Gatima Muliro. The residents of Zambezi region have a unique culture and the traditions based on their food and the dances. The people of Zambezi practice a mixed economy of subsistence, crop farming, and animal husbandry. I invite you to watch the uniqueness of the culture dances that will be performed here today. This will be just a peak of the iceberg. The Zambezi region is rich in fertile land and the abundance of water, wildlife, fish, and other natural resources, including our four rivers, the Great Zambezi, Kwandu, Linyanti, and the Chobe. The region is potential source of grain schemes and tourism to provide employment opportunities and food security for Namibia. Today, we are celebrating the day when our country got independence from the colonial yoke of the then racist South African regime of South Africa. We are here in the Great Zambezi region to celebrate the 34th anniversary of our independence. This day holds great significance as we honor the sacrifices of our gallant fighters who fought for our freedom. Today we remember how our beloved country got its independence through a protracted, long and bitter armed struggle. We honor the freedom fighters who fought bravely to emancipate our country and people to be free from the shackles of slavery. Freedom from all forms of human subjugation comes with responsibility. As a nation, we need to uphold unity, working together towards economic development and progress. We call upon our youth to use education as a tool to shape a brighter future of our today's generation and the generations to come. On this occasion, let's pledge and contribute positively to our country's economic development and growth. Happy 34th Independence Day to Namibia. Happy 34th Independence Anniversary to Zambezi region. On this historic occasion, let's remember that freedom is a precious gift to us from those who fought vigorously against colonialism, oppression, racism, and apartheid. We must uphold the values of unity, diversity, and progress that our nation stands for. After the launching of the armed struggle at Omulwombashe in the north of the country, to be exact, in Omsati region today, the war shifted to Zambezi region where substantive successful battles at Babwata, Singalamwe, Kamenga, and the Gatima Mulilo were fought against the enemy forces from 1968 to 1980. In 1975, when Angola got our independence, Angola gave us that authority to use its southern part so that we launch and fight 
the war into Namibia. We are so much excited and, and hearts swell with pride and gratitude for the countless brave souls who fought relentlessly to liberate our beloved land of the brave. Our struggle for our beloved Namibia's independence was more than just a political movement. It was a battle for our stolen rights to self-determination, fairness, fairness, human dignity, and the decency. I extend a well welcome to all gathered here today, including our esteemed dignitaries from afar and near in Namibia and from our neighboring countries who relentlessly sacrificed their lives, resources, and supported our cause. We feel privileged to have such a huge presence of leaders of, and our community at large. Our dignitaries, please enjoy the delicacy of our Zambezi Brim. Happy 34th anniversary day to Namibia. Happy 34th independence anniversary to Zambezi. One Namibia, one nation. God bless Namibia, and I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lawrence Sampofu, for that brilliant welcome. We really feel welcomed and honored. Indeed, a people united for prosperity at the 34th Independence Celebrations, and a people united to liberate the country, as you clearly articulated. We we will again invite two cultural groups. The Kapako Cultural Group, the Kwe Youth Culture. This will be followed by the performance by the Namibian Defense Force Military Band. We are going to have the Kapako cultural group, the Kwe Youth Culture, and then followed by a performance by the Namibian Defense Force Military Band. Can we welcome them?
I think yeah, there is a sick person, and then we have a traditional hila, and then you need to have a tow pada before the traditional hila should perform his duty. Here it starts. Dr. Moa, we were talking about the historical significance of these cultural performances earlier. Would you like to reiterate your sentiments in that regard, please? Thank you. Um, earlier on, we saw a cultural performance. Like I indicated, uh, the Zambezi region is a melting pot of uh, different cultures. So earlier on, we saw a performance by the Itenge Cultural Group, um, which is predominantly um, composed of uh, the Masobia speakers. And later on, we had uh, a cultural performance, um, I believe, by the um, was it was it the uh, the uh, Colossi uh, uh, cultural group? I'm, I'm speaking under correction, but that is uh, mainly com um, uh, composed of uh, speakers of uh, the the, the or, or rather uh, descendants of the Mafue uh, group. And then later on, we had we saw a cultural performance by the Que or the Baraquen, uh, Thank you, Doctor. or Baraquena, which are mainly found in the western part of the region. So that goes a long way in demonstrating 
uh, the fact that the Zambezi region is a melting pot of uh, different culture and currently there's in another performance by a different uh, cultural group or a different ethnic group. Thank you, Doctor. Say. Thank you so much. as well as the Quaid Youth Group. Thank you.
Defense Force Military Band. We now will witness the introduction of the keynote speaker who will be done by Vice President Her Excellency Dr. Natumbu Nandendaitwa. The keynote address, of course, will be delivered today by His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia and the Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force. No doubt about the fact, Doctor, that people of the Sambezi region have come out in numbers to witness this milestone historic event hosted for the first time since 1990 in the great Sambezi region. Indeed, um, as you can see, there are droves and droves and droves of uh, people who came and obviously schools are closed, so um, all the, school, uh, the learners, they are present and the community members far and wide in the great breadth uh, 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 of the Republic or, or rather of the, of the region have come in large number. Thank you, Doctor. So it is really um, a marvelous sight to, to behold and it's uh, a rare, I think it's one of uh, the uh, few opportunities that one in a lifetime that the independence celebration will be held uh, in the Zambezi region. Like you pointed out, since independence, uh, it has not been held in the Zambezi region, so we'll look, we're looking for another 30 years plus before the celebration is held. So Thank you, Doctor. Really an, an Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Director of Ceremonies, Your Excellency, Comrade Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, Your Excellency, Madam Mbumba. The global warming is catching up with us. I would therefore sincerely request that let me stand on the protocol established by our director of ceremony as well as the governor and to leave space for our main speaker. We are here today in Katima Mulilo, the birthplace of Bernard Kangongoro Simbae. And I can proudly say and join him wherever he is to say happy 34 independence anniversary. It is now 34 years ago when the people of Namibia under the founding president, Dr. Sam Safishuna Nuyoma, the leader of our revolution, have declared to the world and to the Namibian people that Namibia is free and independent nation. From that day, Namibia became a member of the international community. Namibia is a respected nation in African continent, in the world and we owe our freedom and independence to the heroes and heroines of our revolution whose blood waters our freedom. We owe our freedom to all Namibians from all walks of lives whose patriotism and love for their country remain the glue that hold our nation together and continue to inspire us. We owe our freedom to the international community and the friendly countries who were with us and extend round support materially and diplomatically. As we celebrate 34 years of our independence, we should rededicate ourselves to the noble cause of unity, peace, patriotism, and hard work, so that we consolidate the gains that we achieved so far in the noble to enable the current and the future generation of Namibia to enjoy a fulfilled life. Director of Ceremony, my task this morning 
is to introduce to the audience the keynote speaker, a person who does not need much introduction. However, I must say, for the first time I met this person, and that was in the year 1974. One thing I remember of him, and I believe I was not wrong, he is very humble and cons considerate of others, and he remained in that. He is a son of Namibia, a freedom fighter who contributed immensely to the attainment of our freedom. He is a son of the Namibian people who has been prepared for the task he is performing today. I am saying this because following his route, following his road, he has been assigned different responsibilities. At the time of Namibia's independence, we are all aware that not the whole Namibia got independence in 1990, but we had the Wallfish Bay that was still to be negotiated. The Swapo Party government, under the leadership of Dr. Sam Shafishuna Nyoma, identified a capable Keda in person of our keynote speaker to lead such a negotiation, a task he performed with dedication, commitment. Subsequently, in 1994, Wallfish Bay was, reintegra was integrated into the rest of Namibia. I'm talking of a cadre who has held different positions, both in the public service and in the political life. The first secretary to the cabinet after Namibia's independence. If we are today talking about a well-established public service, thanks should go to the person who's going to address us today. He is the one who seed the seed that made the current public service. A person who has also contributed to the food security in our country in his capacity as a Minister for Agriculture. A person who knows how to take care of our finances when he was a Minister of Finance. We all say education is key. He contributed to the education sector in our country as a Minister of Education. Information is power. It's the same person who has also contributed to this sector as a Minister of Information and Broadcasting. Safety and security. If there is no safety and security, everything will be in tatters. This person has contributed in his capacity as Minister of Safety and Security. Comrades, if that is not enough, he has served as the Secretary General of the Swapo Party, the ruling party, and of course, he also served as the Vice President of the Republic of Namibia. What a preparation for the job to be done.